In this video, we're going to make a comparison of two kinds of nibs that are capable of creating thick and thin lines. The flex nib, which relies on pressure to vary line width, and the fude nib, which creates differences in line width based on angle. I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each nib type and have them battle it out to help us see the differences and similarities and help you decide which one is the better choice for you. Now, I'm sure many of you are thinking that these nibs are entirely different and that it's silly to compare the two. If you use your pens for calligraphy, then you're entirely right. There's no way to reproduce many of the things that a flex pen does with a fude, and vice versa. But keep in mind that this comparison is from the perspective of an artist, not a calligrapher, and that when drawing, the differences become less pronounced and more complex. As you can see in this side-by-side -side demonstration, the fude and the flex can be used to create quite similar effects. And since there are many people out there just getting into fountain pens for drawing who aren't sure what kind of pen to get, I think this comparison will be very useful. Okay, here are my two very game contestants. I should note that the pen bodies aren't particularly important here since this is a nib comparison. I simply chose those pen bodies that are comfortable and work well for those two nibs. On the left is a Franklin Christoph Model 31 antique glass body with a number six steel flex nib from Fountain Pen Revolution. This is by far my best performing steel flex nib, but the main reason I chose it for this contest is that it's close in price to its foodie opponent. I figured that since some people might already think this is a comparison between apples and oranges, the apples and oranges should at the very least cost about the same. Plus, the nib in here actually outperforms many of the modern and vintage flex gold nibs out there. On the right is a number five Fude nib. It was originally a normal steel nib made by Yovo and was turned into a Fude nib by FP Nibs, a Spanish company specializing in all kinds of nib customizations. This is my best performing Fude nib housed in a Twisby 580. Let's start this battle with our first criteria, ease of use. How easy is it to create line variation with each nib? This is where the flex pen holds the biggest advantage. It's easier to create line thickness with a flex pen. In fact, it's completely intuitive and something we're all accustomed to from earliest childhood. Everyone has pressed down harder on a pencil to make a heavier line, and in many ways the flex nib is absolutely no different. I don't have to change the way I hold the pen, all I have to do is press a little bit, going from thick to thin, or thin to thick lines, without any kind of change in angle which is very different from the food in it, which on the other hand requires you to change the angle in order to get line variation. So if I want to go from a thinner line to a thicker line, I actually have to change the angle, which requires a lot more training and can even over time put a strain on your wrist. Now, this does get easier with practice and also becomes more intuitive, but it'll still never be as comfortable as simply pressing down. So in the ease of flex category, the flex pen easily wins by first round knockout, with a caveat. The flex might be easier to use, but you still have to train your hand to use it, particularly if the flex pen is very, very soft, making it difficult to control. The twists and turns you have to employ with a fude, however, are far less intuitive, and I would say overall it's more difficult to get a fude to do what you want than a flex pen. The second criteria is speed of line variation. How quickly can I transition from thin to thick lines? Here again, the flex pen reigns supreme. Since it's easier to control pressure than angle, I can go from thin to thick in an instant. Most importantly, I can do it on the move as I'm actually making a stroke. This is more difficult with a fude pen, though not impossible. One of the best tests of flex is the figure eight. This is something anyone can do with a flex pen right away. To do the exact same thing with a fude pen takes a bit of practice, and even then the transitions are not quite as smooth. Now, this speed of flex and smooth transition is very important for those doing calligraphy, where you create long continuous strokes. However, in drawing, it's not as crucial, since many drawing styles, you build up your drawing out of short strokes. So really, when it comes to changing line with short strokes, the food and the flex are about the same. So in this flex match, the flex wins 
easily, but depending on your drawing style, it may not exactly matter. The next criteria is elegance of line. In this category, the flex pen is dominant. The ability to easily and quickly change line width allows you to create beautiful flowing lines. The Fude pen's line quality is usually a little bit rough edged and the transitions not quite as smooth. That's the flex, and let's see if we can achieve a similar result with our Fude pen. Okay, as you can see, the flex line is far prettier, but such a pretty line is not always advantageous. In drawing, there is such a thing as too pretty a line. That is to say, line quality that is too focused on being decorative for its own sake, that it actually gets in the way of the business of creating a powerful image. So, in this match, flex wins by submission. The foodie lost, but wasn't injured, and can continue to the next match unfazed. The fourth criteria is line width. How much variation is there between thick and thin lines? Here things get interesting. Of course, line variation in flex will vary. The nib in this one is quite flexible, and while there are gold vintage flex nibs that exceed this degree of line variation, they're in very high demand and can get quite expensive. In the case of food nibs, there's no search or expense. Any food a nib you buy will give you great line variation, in most cases better than anything a flex nib can achieve with the exception of a few rarities. So who wins here? Well, in this case, we can call it a draw or pretty close to it, but it should be noted that the FPR number six is the only steel flex nib that can actually be pushed this wide. In most cases, even when up against vintage flex wet noodles, the Fude would win outright. The fifth criterion I think is best described as wetness. Flex pens require a very generous feed to provide enough ink under flex conditions. As a result, most flex pens will write quite wet with no pressure, and with pressure will put down a lot of ink. These very wet puddle-like lines can take a long time to dry, depending on the type of ink and paper used. This in drawing can be a difficult issue, since unlike in writing, in drawing you often have to go over an area many times. Sometimes the flow in a flex pen, particularly the vintage ones, is so generous that the pens will shoot ink onto your paper when shaken slightly, or into your cap when stored upside down. I should note that the flow in this pen is not very heavy, but the downside is that this pen will occasionally railroad when, work, when you're working very, very quickly. So let's try the flow here. Okay, not as heavy as the flow in most flex pens. But this is where usually the Fude has a fairly large advantage. When putting down a thick line, a large part of the nib makes contact with the paper, spreading the ink out in a fairly thin sheet. As a result, the lines dry more quickly and are easier to go over many times. This kind of stuff is particularly important if you plan on going over your line work with washes. You really don't want to wait forever for your lines to dry and then find out, even when the lines are completely dry, that there's so much ink residue on top sitting on the surface of the paper that it actually mixes in with your delicate washes. The sixth criterion is tricky to summarize, but let's call it fickleness. Flex pens are notoriously persnickety things. The interaction of feed and nib and ink has to be just right in order for the pen to function well. Vintage pens mostly don't have this problem, but many modern flex pens have feeds that do not provide an adequate supply of ink. 
Furthermore, I found that many flex pens are very sensitive to the kind of ink and paper being used, and I often see people complaining about their railroading issues on the fountain pen forums and asking for just the right ink and paper combination. I should mention that the flex pens made by Pilot, such as the 912 FA and the 743 FA, uh, which I have a review of and I'll link to below, for the most part do not have this problem, but their reliability comes at a fairly steep price. As fantastic as this Fountain Pen Revolution No. 6 nib is, I've had a lot of problems finding a pen body that works well with it and one that I actually enjoy using. This nib works very well in a Jinhao X750 and the Noodler's Ahab, but the former is an all-metal, heavy, clunky pen, and the latter is a cheap, sturdy, practical pen that just doesn't excite me when I'm using it. Fortunately, I found this excellent, well-balanced Franklin Christoph pen works very well with the Fountain Pen Revolution nib, so that after several years of looking for an ideal home for this very ink-hungry nib, I finally have found one. Now, no such fickleness exists with Fude nibs. Every single Fude nib, no matter how cheap it was, has worked perfectly. When you buy a nib separately, such as the one I did here, you can stick them into absolutely any pen that fits them. I put this nib into a number of my pens without any problems whatsoever. They don't require special feeds or are sensitive to certain inks and papers. They work perfectly under any conditions in any pen that you put them in. Now again, there are examples of vintage flex and modern pens that work perfectly well, so this is by no means a blowout victory for the Fude. My point here is that flex pens are potentially subject to a much larger variety of problems than Fude pens, which earns the Fude pen a split decision in this particular contest. Okay, now on to Criterion 7, which is variety of line. How many different kinds of line can this nib create? Yes, flex pens can create more elegant lines and are easier to control in many ways, but there are a lot of limitations. For example, with a flex pen, you can only create a thick line on the downstroke. Like so. Again, this is not an issue when doing calligraphy, which is often designed specifically to exploit this quality in a flex pen. But what if you want to create a thick line on the upward stroke? That's impossible. Or, God forbid, on a sideways stroke. That's also really difficult. You would constantly be forced to move your arm into all sorts of contortions or rotate your paper. Also when flexing, sometimes you have to slow way down so that the ink keeps up with the nib. So if I work very, very quickly, you can see that the ink doesn't quite keep up, so that I have to really slow down to make sure that we don't railroad. That kind of slowing down can prevent you from drawing quickly, obviously, and being more spontaneous. A Fude nib, on the other hand, can go from thick to thin in absolutely any direction. So yes, I can mimic many of the lines that are created with a flex pen, but I can also go this way. I can be thick in the upward stroke, right, and go from thick to thin at any angle. Also, as you can see here, the Fude can be used with much more speed. Right? I can work quickly and there's absolutely no issue of railroading or the ink not keeping up with the ink requirements of the nib. Um, plus, while the flex pen allows you just a few different kinds of lines, you can essentially go from thin to thick, create a line like this. You can go from, let's see if I can do this, thick to thin, right, and then all the different variations in between the food can create a much larger variety of different lines. So for instance, you can with a food it create thick dash like lines. You can create kind of scrapey lines like this. Uh, if you're using slightly rough paper, it can create almost like this dry brush effect, things that are kind of cloudy. Um, and also you can use the food to fill in large areas, which this, this is something obviously you cannot do with a, a flex nib. Uh, so in short, the Fude, with its huge library of lines, marks, and textures, can, though not as elegantly, mimic what much of what the flex pen can do, but the flex cannot even come close to doing all the things that a Fude nib can. In this case, the Fude nib wins a unanimous decision. Our last criterion is price. This is an easy one. The FPR Steel Flex is a very good option, and in combination with a cheap pen body like a Jinhao X750, will run you about $25. If you want to do better, and I realize this is a complicated topic, you'll have to start looking at either vintage or modern flex, both of which start at around $150.
On the other hand, most Fude pens are quite affordable, though there is one made by Sailor with a gold nib that's super expensive, something around 600 bucks. I have a video where I introduce the Fude pen and give my purchasing recommendations, the link to which I'll leave below. But in short, you can get a very decent Fude pen for under $20. The custom nib in this one is one of my favorite food nibs and ran me about 40 bucks, including shipping from Spain. So here again, I think the Fude nib wins unanimously. All right, our battle of the nibs is over and we have Flex winning in three criteria, ease of use, speed, and elegance of line. Then we have a draw when it comes to how thick the lines go. And then the food wins in the other four categories for wetness, fickleness, variety of lines, and price. Does this mean that I favor the Fude over the Flex? Well, not necessarily. I adore Flex for what it can do, and there's something mesmerizing and addictive about a really well-performing Flex pen, perhaps because it's not all that common. It's a lovely, delicate instrument, which in the right hands can do absolutely wonderful things. But it is very much a fetishized instrument, an object of desire by collectors, and my main point of this video, I think, is that there are other kinds of pens that function equally well, such as the Fude, or even better, depending on what you're looking for out of your artwork. So, if you're an artist that is looking for an inexpensive, incredibly versatile drawing tool that can create a huge library of different lines and textures, I recommend that you look into the Fude. Ultimately, of course, you should probably try both Fude and Flex, and of course, a different variety of each, to see what works best for you. You'll probably find yourself completely falling in love with both, as I have. Thanks for watching this video, and as always, if you have questions and comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to respond.